Brad. Ryerson. Needle nose Ned, Ned the head. Come on, buddy. Case Western High. This guy, does it get better than this guy? I don't think so. I don't think so. We're going to do Ted later. He's our favorite. Let's sing the praises of the unsung. All those actors that are in our favorite movies that didn't necessarily go on to stardom. Not the Bill Murrays, not the Audrey McDowells. Can we agree that she's not a very good actress? She's fine, right? But she's not a great actress. She served, but she did her part in this movie. She did it no harm. In fact, anything more would probably have been a distraction from all the marvelousness that is this wonderful movie. Let's start with this guy. Does he look familiar? He's been in lots of stuff. He's been in lots of Bill Murray's movies. The reason is, this is Bill Murray's older brother. His name is Brian Doyle Murray. He's been tons of stuff. Do you recognize him from one of the greatest movies ever? Christmas Vacation. Clark. Yeah, that's him. Clark. <laughs> that great. So in Groundhog's Day, of course, he's playing the mayor. The name of the mayor is Buster. He was a member of Second City in Chicago, which a lot of these actors in this movie are from that world, that improv world. But Harold Ramis, do you know who that is when I mention that? He's this guy. He's the director. And he's directed all of those over-the-top comedy movies in the 80s and 90s. These movies? So Brian Murray, he also played... Jack Ruby in JFK. He was in Scrooge. And in Scrooge, he played a character by the name of Earl Cross. Bill Murray's character in that movie is named Frank Cross. So is he playing his brother in the movie? I haven't seen the movie in a while. If you know, please comment for me in the comment section. Let me know if the brother is actually playing the brother in the movie. I'm curious. He also is the voice of the Flying Dutchman. Dutchman, the Flying Dutchman in Square Pants, Bob Pants, Square, Square Bob Pants, in SpongeBob Square Pants, a show I've never seen. He was nominated in 1978, 79, and 80 for an Emmy for his work on Saturday Night Live. Good job. I'm a fan. Brian Doyle Murray, I'm a fan. Good stuff. I am not going to talk about Chris Elliott, cabin boy guy who plays Larry in this movie, because I find him to be creepy. But this, the girl that he's putting his arm around, that's Nancy. Isn't she great? She's perfect for this role. She's perfect as the girl that you think Bill Murray is trying to get a one-night stand from. I don't know. She has, she nails that vibe. and She's got a rocking little body. <laughs> but she's actually a very good actress. Okay, her name. Her name is Marita. Garrity, M-A-R-I-T-A, Garrity. And she's actually a good, solid actress. Have you ever seen the movie Broadcast News? Holly Hunter, William Hurt. It's one of Greg's favorite movies. There's a scene where Holly Hunter is watching a clip of William Hurt interviewing a rape victim. And the scene is about William Hurt being a phony. But Nancy, Marita, is playing the rape victim in that scene. And she's fantastic. The scene only works if that rape victim is believable. And she's not featured in the movie. She's not even featured in that scene. But that's her giving a solid performance. So we like you, Nancy. Margaret? Hello. You two know each other? You might say that. We used to go out. We like you, Marita. She's also married to this dude who won a Tony for this. Awesome, right? So Marita Garrity, I'm a fan. I'm a Nancy fan. All right. Did you know that Michael Shannon, Zod, Natural Born Killers, was in Groundhog's Day? Did you know that he was this guy? Boom. Awesome, right? I didn't know that. When I started working on this, I recognized his face, but I couldn't put the name to it. 
and I realize that he's the guy that Netflix keeps trying to tell me to watch in the movie Waco. And I recognized him because I just watched him play George Jones in like the George Jones, Tammy Wynette story. He's good, he's George Jones, but he's one of those faces that I couldn't quite place. Also an improv guy. This was his first movie, but he's a big old star now, um, so we don't need to go on about him. But the girl who played his wife in this. You are the best. Her name is Hinden Welch, playing Debbie, the newlywed. Lots of voice work in cartoons. Not a lot of other movies or television, but Teen Titans. Young Justice, lots of Teen Titans, Cartoon Network special. I'll show you. All of this. Go buy chickens. Oh, yeah. Lots of work. Nice career. The owner of the B&B. Her name is Angela Payton. She's the co-founder of the Berkeley Stage Company and was the leading actress in the first few seasons of the American Conservatory Theater. She has credits in Dirty Harry, Flatliners, The Wedding Singer, Quantum Leap, and an episode of My Name is Earl. Try to find her in that one. Her, she's credited as the old lady. <laughs> but she's best known for playing this. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. And that's a good line read. Agree? Okay, who's next? Both of these guys are named Rick. So we have Rick Overton as Ralph. And this is Rick Kukumin. C-U-C-O-M-M-U-N. Kukumin. Kukumin. As Gus. Let's talk about Flapjack Rick first. And some Flapjacks. Too early for Flapjacks? Rick Overton. Right? Flapjack guy. Lots of movies. Lots of movies. Oh, let's look. There he is. Rick. Lots and lots and lots of PIS. Drunk history. Lots and lots of movies. He was in an episode of Amazing Stories. In the one called Miss Stardust. Which, the Amazing Stories are bizarre. I should do an episode where I'm just doing amazing stories and all the cast members in those. What do you think? Comment if you think that's something you would like to watch. My 400 subscribers and my 12 viewers, Terry Kirkendall. He was in the one called Miss Stardust. He was in two episodes of Seinfeld playing Drake, which seems like it's a meme. I don't know what this is about. Maybe somebody can tell me. He was in Willow. He's been in lots of movies. Two episodes of The Office as Pam's dad and in Veep as Congressman Spencer. But for us, we will always remember him as... And some flapjacks. The flapjack guy from Groundhog's Day. All right, the other Rick playing Gus, this is Rick Document. I don't know. He was in Spaceballs. Here he is. Along with this guy, Ned, who we're going to talk about later. And do you recognize him from this movie, from this scene? I, it could have been that crack I smoked earlier, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Listen, i got to leave town for a couple days, okay? No big deal. Just, you know, that new business that I started with those Colombian guys? Oh, you mean Uncle Escobar? Yeah. He was also in an episode of Amazing Stories called Guilt. The emotion, guilt, is sent on a vacation cruise when he falls in love with the most unusual woman with Dom DeLuise, Lonnie Anderson, Charles Dunning, and Charles Nelson Reilly. Oh. Directed by Burt Reynolds, this guy. Right. Rick Document was also in Die Hard and The Hunt for Red October as this guy. Good career, dude. I'm a fan. I like you, Ricks. Doesn't she have a great face? This is a good face. There's also something about casting waitresses in movies. This one, this one, Hell or High Water, this one. Second one from Hell or High Water, this one. There's a certain thing about casting waitresses. Maybe there should be an agency that just like, we have the best faces for waitresses. Kiss my kiss. But this waitress, our waitress, that we're a fan of, that we're singing the praises of, is Robin Duke. She was on Saturday Night Live. Do you remember her? There's this whole blank area I have from some of the cast members in the 70s that just don't register. You never see them in anything, but she's one of them. She's a co-founder of Women Fully Clothed, 
a sketched comedy troupe which toured Canada. She was on the series SCTV and she teaches writing as a faculty member at Humber College in Toronto and had a recurring role playing Wendy Kurtz in the sitcom Schitt's Creek. Do you guys watch that? I watched two episodes. I liked 40% of it. It was almost something to like. I watched, I watched her Saturday Night Live skit. It's not great. She has kind of a Carol Burnett thing about her, but the writing's not great. But she's in Groundhog's Day. I'm super jealous. Good job, Robin Duke. I would love to have your career. You're awesome. All right, this guy, this guy. <laughs> Ken Hudson Campbell. Also remember in the 90s where everybody had three names? He's, he's credited in this movie as Man in Hallway. But I think he's good. I think he's funny. Oh. <laughs> 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 he was also played the Santa in Home Alone. Do you remember this guy? He was also in Seinfeld in the episode called The Seven, where he played Ken, the husband of Susan's first cousin, Carrie, also a member of Second City. Those improv guys. The old man. Super sweet. We love the old man. It was one of the things that brought the heart to this movie is that whole interplay. This actor, his name is Les Potowell, or Potowell, P-O-D-E-W-E-L-L. -E -E -L -L. And dude has credits. Check it out. He's got a few credits on there. He's got some credits. We love him. That's nice. The Piano Teacher, played by Peggy Roeder. I like this little dance she does. Let's, let's do her little dance. So her name is Peggy Roeder. She's done lots of regional theater. Nothing big, but I love her. And I love her little dance. I am a Peggy fan. How about you? The psychiatrist. Couples, families. I have an alcoholic now. David Pasquesi. David Pasquai. Also a Second City guy. Also on Veep. Played Andrew Meyer. This guy on Veep. He's got a lot of credit. You probably recognize him. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on him because he's had a really good career and still does. He was in She-Hulk. Attorney at Law. Thank God it got canceled as Mr. Immortal, and he's in Boba Fett. He's, got, he's getting good work. He had an improv show on Broadway that Michael Shannon used to attend and participate in. Exit Herman, walk on into the bank. Exit Felix, and stand there with a the not so bright look. The prison guards, these boys, there's Nancy, but these boys, that is Chet Dabowski as Felix. This one, playing Herman, is one of the executive directors of Groundhog's Day. He's perfect for this role. His real name is C.O. Erickson. Before working his way up as an executive producer, he was a production manager and worked on all five of Alfred Hitchcock films at Paramount. Rear Window, To Catch a Thief, The Trouble with Harry, The Man Who Knew Too Much, and Vertigo. Imagine that you're a production manager on Rear Window and Vertigo. And then you also got a small role in Groundhog's Day. Awesome, right? As an executive producer, he's worked on Urban Cowboy, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Popeye. Let's watch a Popeye clip. Yeah, I won't know why I knew he needed me. It could be fantasy. Oh. And Ridley Scott, Blade Runner. Dude, C.O. Erickson. You had a cool name and you've had a cool life. The other one, Felix Chet Dabowski, who only has four other credits. He was in a movie called Stranger Than Fiction in 2006. Stranger Than Fiction, we know that movie, it's this movie. He plays Man in Tweed. I can't find him, but he was in it. I mean, if you're only gonna be in a couple movies, make him two great movies. When I Google him, this comes up. Is that Polish? Anybody? Is this Polish? Tom? Can you tell me? I tried to find these guys. Correct. 
Makes some rivers for 600. Yeah. This South American lake drains into the smaller lake. What is Titicaca? Bolivia. Because these are great faces. Those are great reaction shots. They're just listed as old people watching Jeopardy. But let's go over who they are. This is Evangeline Binkley. This is Samuel Meigs Ben Zwick. One of my favorite roles that I always come back to is the boy in the tree. Is it what does Bummery say? You've never thanked me. Let's watch it. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? You little brat. You have never thanked me. I'll see you tomorrow. That. And here he is. I found him. No other movies. His name is Sean. Oh God, what's up with the last names? Shabat, Shabat, who has no other credits. And it looks like he's probably gay or a missionary. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Or both, maybe. Here's another connection. This is Diana B. Are you this the is one Diana B. Is? Shaw, mm -hmm. How's it? who shows up as the ER it. nurse. She was also in Home Alone as the got? airline counterperson. Good job, Diane. And now I'm going to add you as a friend on Facebook. Done. All right. Who doesn't love these ladies? Give me a flat tire. Wow. How does it get to the earth? Oh, it's an earthquake. The fastest jack in the West. Is that what the line is? Let's talk about the old ladies. This is Barbara Ann Grimes, and she has five movie credits and 11 TV credits, including The Hudsucker Proxy. Starsky and Hutch, and Murder, She Wrote, and was in an episode of my favorite TV show of all time. I can't find her on it, but she still had a better creator than me. Oh, I'm super jealous, Barbara Ann. And this is Ann Heakin, and she has two credits, Groundhog's Day and a movie called Roommates in 1995, starring Julian Moore. And this is Lucina Paquitin, and I'm going to read this. It's called In Golden Years. Lucina Paquit Gabbard fulfilled a lifelong dream. After wrapping up her teaching career, Lucina Paquit Gabbard started over as a movie actress in her golden years. She fulfilled a lifelong dream. She was an English professor. She was in Prelude to a Kiss, My Best Friend's Wedding, Nova Kane, Groundhog's Day. She also performed on stage in the Steppenwolf Theater production of The Grapes of Wrath in Chicago and New York where the production won a Tony Award. She took early retirement from teaching when she was about 60, and she and my dad said they were going to become actors. Great, right? One more hurrah for the old ladies in the car. Oh, thank you, young man. It's nothing, ma'am. I had the tie around the jack. Just be comfortable, all right? Give me a minute. Nobody, there's nobody who's seen Groundhog's Day that does not remember it the scene oh god it is so good to see you uh, what are you doing for dinner uh, something else it's been great seeing you needlehead take care <laughs> watch out for that first step it's a doozy <laughs> i actually didn't recognize him from anything else did you but he was in memento and he was in deadwood which was a great show as Commissioner Hugo Jerry. Surprisingly, he was a basketball star and was in a band called A Cast of Thousands with somebody named Stevie Ray Vaughan before that person became Stevie Ray Vaughan. He was nominated for a Tony Award. Do you want to see all of his credits? Check it out. Do you want to come say hi? Come here. Penelope wants to say hi. Hi. This has been going for a while. He was in Spaceballs. Oh. He was in Thelma and Louise. So, please like and subscribe this channel. But before I go, I want to show you a scene with Stephen Tabowski, Tabalowski with Stephen Tabalowski in Glee, which is so great. Watch this. I've been collecting since 1961. Uh, isn't this just lovely and normal? They're my everything. Tea time. <laughs> right. Funny. He's funny. Like and subscribe my show. Say hi. Like and subscribe. And playing the groundhog. How can we forget? His name is Scooter. Trapped in the wild near Illinois. A few weeks before filming. <laughs>
poor guy. I'd be going, what's going on? Why am I in a movie with Bill Murray? I hope it's a hit. But he has no other credits. Fun. This is fun. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm doing next time. I'm thinking Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That one has a lot of little side characters in it. Charlie Sheen is in it. But I remember there's like a waiter who's really good in that scene. Do you remember this scene? Is there a problem? You're Abe Froman. That's right. I'm Abe Froman, the sausage king of Chicago. For some reason, we should find out who he is. Let's find out who that guy is. Bye.